Hi, I'm Chao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and from the Frederick Health Hospital. Today, we're going to be talking about the T and protrusion or TAP technique, a straightforward and useful provisional bifurcation stenting technique. The patient is a 80-year-old uh, man with hypertension and hyperlipidemia. He uh, had stenting of his LED about five years ago, and he's done well until about a few months ago when angina uh, started to limit his pickleball game. Cardiac workup included an echo, which showed infralateral hypokinesis and an EF of 45 to 50%. Nuclear stress tests uh, demonstrated lateral and infralateral uh, reversible ischemia. Uh, he was therefore referred for coronary angiography and possible PCI. Uh, diagnostic angiography showed minor plaque in the LED with widely patent stents. Uh, the RCA uh, had no significant disease. The uh, left circumflex uh, seen here uh, has a severe disease at the OM bifurcation as well as a severe stenosis uh, more distally uh, in the mid circ so our initial approach uh, was a, a provisional stenting strategy. Uh, the idea is to uh, protect the OM with a wire, stent only the circ, and only actually balloon or stent the OM if necessary. Uh, provisional stenting has been shown in multiple studies to have uh, favorable results. So here is the uh, angiographic result after uh, pre-dilating the circ with a 2.5 balloon. Uh, stenting with a 275 by 33 millimeter DES and post dilating with a, a 30 uh, NC. So while the circ looked pretty good, uh, the ostium of the gelled OM uh, is uh, severely pinched. Um, so uh, what do we do next? So we uh, decided to go ahead and balloon the OM. Uh, we uh, rewired the OM uh, through the circumflex stent and performed a kissing balloon angioplasty uh, at the bifurcation. After uh, kissing balloon angioplasty, uh, the result unfortunately was not much better. If anything, the uh, OM uh, looked worse. Uh, the ostium is still pinched and now possibly, uh, possibly dissected. Um, there is also a new stenosis in the mid-OM, uh, which could be wire bias uh, or, or a wire dissection. So uh, what do we do now? Well, uh, with the possible uh, side branch uh, dissection, I think it's pretty clear that we will need to uh, stent it. Uh, but uh, which uh, strategy should we use? Um, here are the most common uh, bifurcation stenting techniques, and each have advantages and drawbacks. Uh, T-stenting uh, is uh, probably the easiest bifurcation technique, but unless the side branch takes off at close to 90 degrees from the main branch, the ostium of the side branch uh, is going to be left uncovered. Um, crush, or specifically internal crush, as in the case of provisional stenting, is also quite common and very well studied, but it leaves up to three layers of mangled uh, stent crushed material in the main branch, and rewiring and passing equipment into the side branch for a final kissing angioplasty uh, can often be uh, very challenging. Next, uh, culotte, or most, uh, more uh, precisely, uh, reverse culotte, in the case of uh, provisional stenting, leaves up to two layers of stent in the main branch and has the added drawback of temporarily losing wire access to the main branch after the side branch, has been, uh, side branch stent has been deployed. And finally, kissing stents, uh, sometimes used uh, in an emergency, is the most straightforward, uh, but uh, it is, first of all, not a, a provisional stenting technique and requires a seven French or larger guide and, uh, importantly, leaves behind a very large neocarina uh, that uh, makes future PCI uh, procedures uh, very challenging. And then there is TM protrusion, or TAP. Uh, TAP is a, a modification of T-stenting where the side branch stent is placed protruding just slightly into the main branch so that the side branch ostium can be covered. Uh, the technique uh, is almost as straightforward as T-stenting and does not result in loss of wire access to the main branch and does not leave behind multiple stent layers or crush mangled stents behind. However, there is a small neocarina, uh, which is minimized for larger bifurcation angles greater than 60 degrees uh, and uh, smaller side branches, less than two and a half millimeters. So here is uh, how you do it. Um, step one, um, as in all provisional bifurcation stenting techniques, uh, both the main branch and side branch are wired, and the main branch is stented, uh, which then gels the side branch. 
Step two, the side branch is rewired through the main branch stent and kissing balloon angioplasty is performed. Step three, uh, you advance a uninflated balloon into the main branch and position the side branch stent. Now this is the most tricky part of TAP. Um, you have to carefully position the side branch stent in such a way that its proximal edge is lined up with the proximal border of the side branch ostium. Doing this will ensure full coverage of the side branch ostium. Step four, the side branch stent goes up. And note again that the side branch stent protrudes into the main branch only at the distal edge of the side branch ostium. Step five, after the stent, side branch stent uh, balloon is deflated, you pull it back halfway into the main branch in preparation for kissing balloon angioplasty. Step six, uh, you perform final kissing balloon angioplasty with the side branch stent balloon pulled back into the main branch. And that's it. Uh, kissing balloon angioplasty uh, modifies the angulation of the side branch uh, stent neocarina. And for smaller side branches and larger bifurcation angles, only a very small uh, neocarina is left behind. Uh, we can actually use some basic trigonometry to calculate how big the neocarina is after tap. The size of the neocarina is equal to the diameter of the side branch stent divided by the tangent of the bifurcation angle. So for a 2.0 millimeter side branch stent, and let's say for a 70 degree bifurcation angle, TAP will leave behind a 0.7 millimeter neocarina in the main branch. And this goes up to 0.9 millimeter for a 2.5 millimeter side branch stent, but that's still submillimeter in size. So again, a good rule of thumb is, uh, consider, uh, is to consider TAP when the bifurcation angle is large i.e. more than 60 degrees, and when the side branch is small, less than two and a half millimeters. All right, so back to our patient. So is he uh, suitable for TAP? Well, uh, look at this uh, initial angiogram. We note that the bifurcation, uh, the bifurcation angle seems to be quite large, and the OM is relatively small. So TAP stenting seems to be reasonable. So we went to work. Um, so recall that we've already stented the left circ and rewired the OM and did kissing balloon angioplasty. So we advanced uh, an uninflated balloon into the circ and positioned the stent in the OM so that its proximal edge is lined up with the proximal border of the OM ostium. And we went ahead and deployed the OM stent. Next, uh, we pull the OM stent delivery balloon partially back into the circ and perform kissing balloon angioplasty with the circ balloon. Uh, this step uh, helps modify and optimize the angulation of the OM stent neocarina in the circumflex. After kissing balloon angioplasty, we did pot and balloon the uh, proximal circ. And finally, uh, we did uh, OCT of the circumflex, and you can see part of the run here. The uh, stent was well sized and well opposed throughout, and at the bifurcation, uh, you can see a very small uh, neocarina, as expected, and only about one to two struts. And uh, here is the uh, final angiographic result, uh, which we thought was uh, quite uh, satisfactory. All right, so take home messages. Uh, TAP is a, a fairly easy uh, provisional stenting technique, at least compared to inside crush or reverse culotte, and can be considered for bifurcations uh, with smaller side branches, less than two and a half millimeters, and larger bifurcation angles, greater than 60 degrees. TAP is a modification of T-stenting uh, with slight protrusion of the side branch stent into the main branch to get full side branch ostium coverage. TAP is fairly easy, uh, maintains wire access uh, to the main branch throughout and does not leave behind multiple stent layers or crushed mangled stent layers. However, um, there is a small neocarina, but that can be minimized uh, for the right uh, bifurcation geometry. Thank you for watching.